Hi everybody, welcome back to Frazzled Dad's Minis. I'm Jim, Frazzled Dad. And today, we're going to be walking through how I did this. This is Srok, a dragon from Archvillain Games. Uh, there's a link in the show notes to the model on my mini factory. I got it as part of a Kickstarter cross-collaboration thing. I can't even remember which Kickstarter. Sorry, but you can go find it over on my mini factory. Anyway, um, on one of the great Discord servers that I'm on, Dingo Paints Minis, and I'll put a Discord link uh, down to the server there because it's a terrific community and you should join them. Anyway, they had a challenge for February to print a dragon, uh, print and paint a dragon. And uh, I had forgotten that I had Sroke in my collection. It's a really well done model. There's a lot of cool details on it. It's kind of a decaying dragon with just all sorts of neat features. Um, and so I was really excited to print it off. The model uh, prints off really well on the 3D printer. Um, it assembled really well. It was really well and thoughtfully put together. And then again, some of the details were just over the top. It was a lot of fun to build and paint this. So let's jump in and get after it. I've got the print all done and here I am using some Milliput. I'm gonna experiment around with trying Milliput as a seam filler and kind of smash it between the parts as I assemble it rather than filling it in afterwards. And I'm hoping that by getting it to ooze out, I'll get a better fill and I'll be able to better mimic and uh, work with the texture of like the skin and the scales and the, the fur. So here I'm just rolling it out and then uh, starting to get those worms of milliput on the wing and getting it smoothed out, trying to make sure I've got enough that when I smash it in there, I can get it to ooze out. And here this is later on in the process. You can see that actually it has worked out fairly well. I'm on the second wing here. This was a better shot. And I'm using a knife, an old dirty X-Acto knife, to trim away the excess to get it uh, the worst of it out before I start smoothing it. Now I've moved on and I'm using a silicone uh, putty clay tool. Uh, there's a link to this set down in the show notes, but these things are great. So um, this is letting me really get in there and I can uh, get some water on that. Milliput works really well when you've got a moist tool and get some water on there. And this is working out really well. I'm getting the seams smoothed out. I'm able to kind of match the texture um, again, moisture on the tool really, really helps. And this is just a matter of remaining, uh, keeping on noodling away at it. And here you can see sort of the end result. Uh, things turned out pretty well and time to move on to painting. So here's where I was running into problems with my various camera setups. Uh, I didn't get good recording. I didn't get usable recordings of the uh, painting process when I was out in the garage. So I've got a few stills and I'll just talk through all that. The garage, by the way, is where I have my airbrush station. So I started out, um, I've just been using Rust-Oleum Black Auto Primer on anything that's not a bust or a display piece. It works great. It's cheap. Rattle cans have a place. But so what I was trying to do was use thin coats of scale color sap green, uh, heavy bodied acrylic, to shoot over the black. And I found out that it just wasn't really registering. Um, I was going to have to use millions of coats, and that just wasn't what I wanted to do. So I ended up going back and shooting some Steino Res white primer um, in a light coat over the... Uh, black and this turned out to work out really well. One thing I did as I was moving along with the Stano Res was I put some extra on the wing ribs. I wanted them to highlight a bit 
I also hit some spots on the wing membranes themselves just to give some different depth, right? So I'd have darker areas, I'd have some lighter areas, and then I really worked to try and highlight the wing ribs because I wanted them to stand out when I got to the rest of the painting. So now we're at a point where I've gotten the uh, the white coat down. I've gone back to that Steinol red, not the Steinol res. I've gone back to the scale color green, and you can see that I've got a really good result here. I was really happy with my recovery here. Um, so yeah, that uh, that worked out pretty well. The ribs are highlighted. I've got some good depth in there, and then it was time to move on. Now it's time to move on to the washes. After the painting, the first thing I did when everything was dry was I hit it with a rattle can matte varnish. Uh, I've got Krylon here in this area, works really well. Let that dry, I think I even let that cure overnight. Then I came in and hit this with a heavy maroon oil wash. And my goal here was to try to show sort of some sickly, blood flowing, you know, just beneath the green layer. Uh, so in the, you know, the crevices and everything, uh, this looks pretty gross right now. Um, but I waited just a few minutes, probably no more than 10. And I started wiping things off with, uh, you know, makeup pads and uh, brushes, little foam jobbers to get most of that off. Uh, I even went a little further than I show here um, by dampening some of those uh, foam brushes with a little bit of white spirits and gently rubbing things out. And here you can kind of see where I'm at before I start moving on to the next step. And the next step is I am going to use a bit of dry brushing to really pull back out the highlights. Um, I put my paints on the wet palette and I'm not afraid to have slightly damp paint and brushes and then I'm just using um, I don't know what you call those dry brush scrubbers you know take a bunch of old gribbly bits and glue them down in something when I first start dry brushing after I've loaded up the brush I will test out both on my hand and then on a less visible spot on the model because I want to make sure that I don't have the brush overloaded and I've learned the hard way to check on the model or you know on a gribbly bit somewhere that you've got the right amount uh, so you don't end up painting versus dry brushing and then this is just working around all of the textures trying to bring the highlights back up uh, on the bits and pieces and uh, I'm pretty happy with how this is working out. I'm enjoying that really dark undertone. And now I'm taking that same dry brush color and I'm really trying to pull out those wing ribs again. So I've got a brush lightly loaded up. Uh, the paint's fairly thin down so it flows off. I've got a good um, brush here that I'm using, Artis Opus. Uh, and just a lot of careful strokes in the same direction as those ribs. And just continuing on all of the ribs, all of the areas to pick out a little more texture and more highlights. Now I'm starting to pick out all of the little pustules. I'm going to come over them with some bit of speed paint or contrast paint, but I want a really bright white underneath before I put that speed paint over the top of them. So I'm picking out all of these gross little pustules with some bright white so that they'll pop. I'm also getting into kind of the woundy, scabby areas to get some bright lights there. Now it's time to move on to the fur. And I had an idea that I really wanted to play some magenta-like color. 
because uh, I think that would go well with the green. So I'm mixing Pro Acryl's purple and magenta and a little bit of black, uh, in this case Vallejo, to sort of desaturate and darken it down. And I'm pretty happy with how things are going. Later on, I'll wash over that. Um, keeping this very thin so that it flows well into the texture of the fur here. There's plenty of little patches of this fur on the legs and the rest of the body, so this is just picking out the rest of those. Now it's time to figure out what I want for the pustule things. Blood for the blood god would be too goopy. So I pulled out the sheets that I did when I tested out all of the Army Painter speed paints. And this is a great thing about having a reference material. Gives me something to look over and figure out what I want. And I settled on Slaughter Red. can't really tell on the screen, but I've watered that speed paint down a little bit. Um, I was trying to get it to flow a little more into the larger areas, but now I'm just getting it on the uh, kind of open areas of the wing and moving on to the little pustule things, getting coverage over every place that I had picked out with that white earlier and I'm really happy with how it is showing through. Here you can see the final result. I'm pretty happy with that. Now it's time to give a wash to the fur areas to show a little more contrast, bring out the texture. I'm using Agrax, Agrax Earthshade, um, getting it on moderately heavy. I'm just using a cheap old brush to really get it into the areas of the fur. Now I want something to sort of pull down the brightness on those pustules. So I'm using a bit of Army Painter Speed Paint Algae Green to darken down all of these just a little bit and, you know, give them kind of a green, gross look. And again, I'm pretty happy with how this was turning out. Now it's time to get some highlights on that fur. So I'm back to that uh, purple and magenta and mixing in a bit of white this time. And I'm just, it's not quite dry brushing, but I'm using the edge and carefully the tip. And I'll do a couple different passes here, sort of uh, two different tones, um, a little bit of highlight, and then I'll come back carefully hitting a few areas with almost full titanium white um, so that there are several different you know, levels of highlight in here. Now it's time to start working on all of the horns and things. So I'm using Citadel Xandri dust. Uh, I've used this approach on a lot of horn-like stuff across many different models and I'm happy with it. So start with Xandri dust as the base. Uh, get There's a lot of things on the wings and the uh, tail and yeah, just lots of spiky bits here. So getting a base down for all of them. All 
also on the underwing, underside of this wing, there are some skulls, which is really cool. So carefully picking out those skulls, again, with this Xandri dust, um, this is a really cool detail of this model, the fact that it's got skulls growing out of it. So now I do some highlighting with pallid witch flesh and uh, I really, again, I like this formula. I've used it all the time for a lot of bone and, and other things. So just continuing to do a bit of highlighting here. Now on to the magic part about these horns. Uh, coming over with a wash of seraphin sepia, and I find that that ties together those two tones really well and just gives a good uh, finishing color here. And if you've got a good model with some texture on the bones or the horns or whatever, then you'll get that wash magic uh, pulling out there as well. That's about it. I didn't bother showing the base. The base was very straightforward. Painted it dark gray, did some highlighting, threw a wash over it, did some pin washes to pull out some of the crevices. Um, but the dragon was by far the more interesting part of things. Uh, Archvillain Games did a wonderful job. This was a lot of fun uh, to do this model. And I appreciate the folks over at Dingo Ate My Minis, um, you know, having this great challenge to... Uh, push me into going and doing another dragon. So here it is, Sroke. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it useful. I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Tell me down in the comments what you thought of this. Uh, do you have any good dragon models that you've really enjoyed? If so, let me know down in the comments because I'd love to follow up. Dragons are a lot of fun to do. Um, so yeah. So until next time, remember, be kind, experiment, learn something. At the end of the day, it's just paint and plastic.